What's up guys? Last episode we actually forgot to record video, so there will be no video on this one, audio only. But we're learning along the way, so stay tuned with us. But now let's jump into episode 3 where we talk about our goals. What's up guys? Welcome to the Put Work In Podcast, episode 3. Here we are. Let's How go. How you guys doing today? Doing alright. Doing wonderful. New week. Excellent. Is it Splendid. a new week or is it the end of a week? It's the end real, of a week. I don't know. You know. Who you at? Depends who you ask. Week. Yeah. It's on a calendar. Sunday is the first day of the week. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's Sunday. Sunday's the Sabbath, and that's the seventh day of the week. My well, Saturday is the mm-hmm. Sabbath. Mm-hmm. I had to work on Saturday. Jesus is the Sabbath. There is no rest except in Him. Amen. <laughs> it is Sunday. We're preaching already. So what'd y'all do this week? Did y'all have a pretty good week? Yeah. I stayed home this week. Helped around the house. Helped Abby do some stuff. How's uh, your night workouts been going? You've been Bro. hitting them consistently? Yeah, actually the last two nights. I worked out with Peyton Friday night. At what time? 6 o'clock? 6.30? And yeah, I drank six. caffeine, which was good. That's the the only downside so far has been the no no caffeine intake because you cannot take caffeine like two hours, three hours before you go to bed, unless you just want to not go to bed. Especially me, I'm pretty sensitive to it. I don't drink it in like twelve hours before I go to bed. Yeah, but you do drink about eight hundred milligrams when you drink it. No, just so you don't four. drink any at all. I drink it during the day, but like. If it's like within like six hours of bedtime, and I take some, especially if it's like a pre workout, I'm gonna be up. He's drinking two at once. That's crazy. Yeah, pulled up. I already finished one. I just wanted some more. But yeah, the only downside to the night workouts has been, and this isn't just night workouts. This is like nine, ten o'clock at night. So it's like instead of going to bed, I'm going to the gym, and uh, yeah, that's that's been like my only downside. And also like, I mean, I'm gonna do it because. You know, I'm just kind of, it's my habit and my discipline right now. But, like, if I wasn't motivated, I could be like, eh, you know, I'm kind of tired. It's the end of the day. I don't want to go. I'm going to go to bed. But, uh, you know, that's kind of not my mindset. So, you know, if the gym in the morning, it's like, bro, I'm tired. I don't want to wake up. I'm just not going to go. I feel like it's easier to miss for me in the morning just because I don't have, I just won't wake up. But, the, you know, at the night, in the evening, I'm already awake. So, you know, it's kind of like no excuse. What else am I going to do till I go to sleep at like 1 o'clock anyway? Yeah, it's kind of like your last thing on the agenda too. Like I feel like yeah. in the morning is like if you get there late, you can't hit all the workouts because you have to yeah, it's, be gone. Exactly. That's also a pro because a lot of times if I'm late, I can't get everything done. I'm kind of like, bruh, it kind of gets me down not having everything checked off my list. But now it's just like just stay up a little later and get it done. You know, I'm going to lose a little sleep. It helps when you go in in the morning but you don't have a checklist you just go in and do what you can yeah for what how many times twice a week maybe not once in the morning so once in the evenings yeah I, I feel like once i get to a point where i'm hitting like high mileage i'm gonna have to do like morning and afternoon yeah i did see a guy do that his name's like elijah Orr. he does like ultra running on youtube and like that's what he was talking about doing uh two a days for just running yeah, it's pretty crazy. And then yesterday I went to the gym at like one o'clock, <laughs> so it was a lot. It was pretty good. You know, that's that's yeah, ideal. Once I get back into running, it's it's gonna be hard to run. You know, ten, twelve miles before work. Yeah. In that two hours, I have to run. Yeah, and do like strength training and all that other stuff we do too. Wait, we do strength do it training? all. <laughs> yeah, and like. It's crazy because afternoon training is pretty much ideal. But, you know, with my job schedule, I'm not, like, going to be like, oh, I'm going to do afternoon training, and then I won't be able to work. So, yeah, I'm just – either it's before everybody wakes up or after everybody goes to sleep, and that's that's what I'm doing. I'm just trying it out. I like I, it. I, I like to not be a statistic, man. I swear I'd be feeling better in the mornings than I do in the evenings when I work out. 99th percentile. 
That's one. That's one reason I started working out in the morning. Whenever I actually <laughs> go. Yeah, I think uh, I just started doing it again, and the only thing I run into is if I wake up late, I, I either miss one workout and I have to go back, or it just you know yeah. kind of drags a little bit until I'm warmed up. Well, I used to like when I'd miss a workout in the morning. I just go in the afternoon, but I can't really do that now, having two kids. Yeah. Just because Abby's here at home all day watching them, it's kind of not fair to her if I'm also gone another two hours at the gym, and then it's bedtime. So yeah, it's kind of not fair to her, you know. But the, the running thing, go back to the running thing. I was thinking like it'd be kind of it's gonna be kind of weird. Uh, it's, you know, midnight out here running in these streets. <laughs> yeah, you're going to have to get those neon vests, man. You don't want to get hit. I'm going to have to figure something else out. Little blinking lights. Get some of them bright shoes that Jordan wears. Which I don't think it'd be weird running out by the gym. But, like, if you want to go, like, you know, when we go on our long runs on that road, like, in the woods, like, there's no way I'm going down there. Which I probably wouldn't do a long run by myself anyway. Yeah. I think the longest I've done is probably. Oh no, I had to run a half yeah, by myself. That's that the longest boring. that I've done is about a half by myself. Yeah, me too. Because y'all did y'all's by yourself, so I was like, I guess we all. Did all right, it. I'm gonna sneak this half but you in did it by at myself. Night, so. Well, it was not night when I started. Yeah. It was Halloween. Yeah, I started at like five thirty, and you know that uh, thing. The road part passed across where it's just really dark with no yeah. lights. Yeah, that was fun. Yeah, to go back. when we ran that and we were like, hey, bro, it's dark. <laughs> I'm like, dude, what is that? Oh, it's a tree. There's something over there. Oh, hey, Bush. Man. When you're by yourself and it's dark, bro, you start like hallucinating. Start seeing stuff. Thinking yeah. stuff's going to jump bro, out. I become, more fo- I become less focused on running and more focused on what's around me. Heart like, rate goes up yep. instantly. See a tree, you hit a 180. Bye. What you been doing, Trevor? Man, I've just been applying for jobs all week. How many? How many? I did uh, 10 applications on Monday, and then two days ago I did three interviews, and the last two days I've had my second round of interviews. So, but And now he's a professional athlete. Yep, now I'm a professional athlete. No, but um, shout out. Uh, I've been actually looking more towards this other company. I was actually talking to him on the phone yesterday for almost two hours, Anthony Myers from uh, Washington National. And he was like, bro, he's like, do y'all even, do you have a podcast? I don't know how, if he knew about us or something, because he asked about the podcast, but shout out if he's listening. What? (laughs) Well, technically nobody's listening right now. Yeah, I but don't know. Everybody friends is. and family. We've been kind of... We'll see y'all in a couple of weeks. Yeah. But, um, I'm listening for sure. Yeah, it's been a good week. Just, man, honestly, just working out and doing job interviews. So, so excited to see what life. this New Year's holds. But you can do that again next week? Just do job interviews and work out all week? I might as well. Look, I tell you, this is what you do if you're feeling down about yourself. Just book a bunch of job interviews with recruiters, not the managers, but with yeah. recruiters, because the recruiters are going to hype you up. Like, yeah, they're trying to good. get you. Yeah, because they get paid off, you know, getting you yeah. hired. But yeah, after I, talking to all the recruiters, man, my confidence was at like all time high. I was feeling good about myself. I don't even need a job now. Yeah, I was like, hey, I'm, I'm all right. So, but let's uh, kind of break through episode three. Here we are. We've made it. Three episodes. We're here. Uh, today we're kind of episode number. We're going to talk about like goals for the new year, how we set our fitness goals, and how what we do to try to accomplish those goals. But first things first, Peyton. Good to have you back, man. How you doing? We're back. We're so, kind of tell us a little bit about you know how you got into fitness and you know where you're at right now with fitness. Mm. It's kind of simple with how I got in. Guy came to our church and just wanted to start a little Sunday night fitness class at the gym. Go in, you know, work a few hours, work out a few minutes, have a devotion. I decided to try it one day. Here I am. Of course, my first month or so, you know, I went to like 
two or three times a week, did the same exact workout every day. If I remember right, I know I did uh, dumbbell rows, dumbbell press, curls, and a few other things. The same exact amount of sets, everything, did like two or three times a week. And then I realized I'm going to be very uneven of a person. You know, I got a big upper body, legs, small. So uh, started what taking changed? It seriously. I started going to the gym more <laughs> and nothing changed. <laughs> Still the same. Still the same. Triangle. But we stronger. Man, yeah. And why? I, I just wanted to try it out. Kind of always wanted to want another hobby you know wanted i've always kind of wanted to go to the gym get a little bit bigger i was a scrawny kid not as scrawny as dylan was but i was a scrawny kid hey, trevor was i mean 144 soaking wet we were all competing for the world's skinniest guy yeah i didn't break 100 pounds to like high school dang you were pretty small dang bro you were skinny <laughs> <laughs> i wouldn't say that that may have been Drastic. It may have been like seven. I was or close grade, to that, but I didn't break a hundred yeah. pounds for a while. Same. Dylan was close to so fifty. I was, bro, I remember being fifty pounds until like fifth grade, and then I remember hitting sixty like that year, and then I hit eighty. And I probably stayed right around the eighty <laughs> until like high school. I'm glad I didn't play football. I, I wanted to, but I was so skin- oh, I was so skinny. High school football. Do you know I didn't count though? I mean, yeah. they put me at center whenever I was like eighty pounds, bro. What is what were they thinking? You're all we had, man. bro. I can snap the ball and get in the dude's way, but the dude back there better be quick. <laughs> hey, shout out to the quarterback, starting quarterback, our eighth grade year, Will Hartzell. Was he starting eighth grade? Yeah, he was our starter. We had like three or four quarterbacks. Coming. Well, he was Tyler our Perkins he was our he was the seventh the grade end. quarterback. He was, Tyler was my my quarterback, and I was I was snapping for the seventh grade team, but I was in eighth grade and Will was starting. And uh, then we had I had Ty in there. Good I don't know. Ty. He was third string. We had three quarterbacks now, and we had twenty three players. <laughs> yep. What and we got too much depth on quarterback, bro. And yeah, nobody on the so line. People playing double spots. Yeah, I mean everybody, and our whole line was like 120 pounds. I'm surprised we beat anybody. Yeah, <clears throat> I'm trying to think. I mean, we didn't beat many people. But and we then did Trevor coming out of games. yeah, coming out of well, like cold water or Independence or. <laughs> Or yeah, could never beat Water Valley. Coffeeville. Yeah, yeah, Water Valley was always our rivalry game, like so close. One game, they like we're like, yes, we're gonna win, and they kicked the field goal, bro. And we're in like yep. the eighth grade. Like who kicks, who kicks field goals? We didn't even know you could. <laughs> yeah, exactly, man. It just broke my heart. We we're like we were about yeah. to win, and then they kick a field goal. Bro went for it every fourth down in eighth yeah. grade. I mean, you had we're to, or you just chunk it down the field. Yep. But uh, Trevor coming out of seventh grade, him and this other guy Vincent Larry were our star receivers. They've had they had a world of promise, and they were like, you know, they were as competitive as can be. We're at we're at uh, Vincent's. Was it your birthday party or Vincent's? It was, was at Vincent's, Vincent's house. Yeah, and they, y'all have a similar birthday too. And uh, so we're at Vincent's birthday party, and we're playing. Like wrap up football, Under bush league football. Yeah, like in his backyard, roots all up in the ground and all that. And uh, Trevor's like, "Hey, bro, yeah, we're playing wrap up or whatever." The but the play before he was like, because somebody had like tackled him or, or something. I don't know what it was, yeah, but it was a big two deal. Hand touch or something. Yeah, two hand touch. And then the next play, dude tackles Vincent and breaks his own arm. Yeah. Like, bro, I was like, bro, fell down, bro. grabbed him from the back, like tried to pull him down and landed on a tree root. And I heard like a, a sound. It sounded like a stick breaking. I was like, yeah, man, I must have landed on a stick. I get up. My arm is just wailing, <laughs> flapping around. I'm like, I just knew instantly. Like, I broke he my said, arm. I'm going to pass well, out. That's not, a, that's not the root that it broke. That's my yep. arm. And funny thing is that uh, my, 
my wife's parents, my in-laws, live at that house. Now, they've actually, like, the people that they bought it from remodeled it, and they live there. No It's way. crazy. Yeah. wonder if it's still got the same smell, man. No. Oh, good old cigarette. Smell. It doesn't. <laughs> what about this, bro? It's like a video game. You go to a certain place and it's loaded. Like, what if there's only, like, certain places in your life that are loaded? And, like... You just haven't rented yeah, the rest of them. Yeah, because they're living at this house that was part of my childhood. And they're <laughs> my in-laws, like... It's a crazy thought. We're branching off into some Joe Rogan stuff here. <coughs> yeah. We need the marijuana. <laughs> we can come up with some good stuff. That might be the future episode. We yeah. get to uh, Delta 8, try it work, out. Work Do put in, bro. Oh. <coughs> and work put. That's a pretty quick story, Peyton. Did you finish? Because I, I, I think we kind of interrupted, maybe. Yeah, a little bit. I mean, it was, like I said, it was a pretty quick story as to why. He just know, got just there. Not be Where are you at now? Like, what are you doing? Uh, I'm not in a very good fitness. PR, right though. Now. Yep, PR. Yeah, Minimalist PR but <laughs> approach. Those be coming out of nowhere too. You know, work out two days a week for three months, and you. I PR wouldn't call it now. a nowhere. You're just being consistent and actually doing a progression, and then oh look, results. And you're not overdoing it. I'm being, hey, I'm consistent at being inconsistent of coming to the gym, though. That's pretty. That's I don't progress. know if I'd call it inconsistent because I mean you've been to hitting two days every week. You'd want to do more, but that's where you're that's at. a solid schedule. If you're going hard, you know you don't you're pushing yourself. You're doing pretty good. <laughs> if you're pushing yourself, we just kind of. I push myself on my bench today. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. When I have a spotter who's not going to the gym at nine o'clock at night. <laughs> Yeah, I get them. I don't know uh, what he's referencing? Them self squatting, <laughs> uh, not squatting, spotting bars. That's all I. Yeah, do you had to do like I did the other day. Just get go in there and set the safety pins up. Yep. I don't. I'm allergic to safety pins. Man, it definitely helps having a spotter there, but you know, just dump it. If you can't get it up, just dump it. Boom. Yeah, because when you get the spotter, you're like, man, this guy's watching me. I gotta get it. Gotta get it. Yeah. The like, pressure. But also, when you're by yourself, you're like, I gotta get it or I'll die. <laughs> that is true. Yeah, and I, that has. So what you do is you get you a weak spotter, right? I can't get it. Get you somebody who you don't think can actually help you get it off of you. So you have the two motivations of one: there's somebody watch me. I gotta get it, and I'm by myself because this person can't. Or help. I mean, it's just not safe to do that. So let's just not even go to the gym. Yeah, that's a good excuse not to yeah. go. Yeah, right. S- sit at home. <laughs> As if you need another excuse. I hate when and, people uh, do that. They're like, lifting's going to hurt your back. And you're like, bro, you're 300 pounds overweight. You don't have, <laughs> <laughs> you don't have any input into what, you know, the, into health yeah, at all. Exactly. Because I would say fitness has, like, cured a lot of the, like, back problems and knee problems yeah. that I've had since, like, high school. For sure. It helps I with posture and all that. It caused me a lot strength. of more problems. <laughs> what did you well, say, Payne? So it's definitely caused me a lot of problems. Well, it's helped with some things, but that's something else is the why in my current fitness. My wrist injury is flaring back up again for some reason. And I've always had a problem with my left leg when it comes to, like, there's a spot on my leg where that nerve is just has not had feeling, and I don't know how long. I don't know why. But at the same time, Around that nerve, I get extremely sharp pain. Every, occasionally, if I bend my legs too much or like to a certain degree, like if I'm sitting on my legs or something, if you know what that, if you know what I mean by sitting on my legs. <laughs> and like, you know, if you're on your knees and you just sit back, right? Yeah, sure. And also, if I go to a parallel position in a squat, it's like, in my left leg, it's just really extreme pain, and I don't know why. How to, I mean, probably she could. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. You should, yeah, just go to, <laughs> at this point, your wrist has hurt for like a year or so. Like, but it had, it hadn't hurt like my wrist. It just started hurting again like a couple weeks ago doing cleans. Common denominator cleans. 
Well, that's the that's the reason I started nerding to begin yeah. with. Did I don't know if Trevor knew, but did you know about my wrist pain, my wrist injury? Uh, I've heard you talk about it before, but I didn't know like how long you've been dealing with it. Yeah. Well, which open workout was that? It was open, the like, it was the quarterfinal. <laughs> the yeah, other it was total the CrossFit. Yeah, the other total where you do uh you have thirty minutes to find one rep max clean bench and overhead squat. And I believe it was actually in that order. Yeah, I think so. But it, he didn't make it to it. So I did the my, other two. Yeah, I did my I did my clean. I was doing my cleans, and of course, you know, I'm working out with Kane, so I know I have to do good on Can't the clean. Dad. Otherwise, he beats me by the bench. Yeah, so how he's the best bencher in our group. So, so I had to just overdo my clean. Of course, I don't know what he got. It was like two sixty five. But I mean, you weren't even like. You weren't within thirty pounds of your PR, were you? Like, well, I did two ninety five, right? And like, of course, when I'm cleaning, my squats always feel fine. You know, like whatever what is weight a clean, I can get bro, on my Describe shoulder. what a clean is for people that don't know what a clean is. You deadlift, and. Dang, it's hard to describe. So basically, you get the weight, you get a barbell. You do a deadlift, yeah. and you shrug and pull up. So it's a really just. I'll a, say it in simpler terms. You get a barbell. Yeah, you say it. In you have a barbell on the ground. If you don't know what a barbell is, I mean, we're just it's the like seven foot bar. You put the weights on there. You pick it up off the ground, and instead of you know you the full you know a power clean is when you just pick it off the floor and put it on your. Put it on your chest. A squat clean or just a regular clean, like Peyton's talking about, you have to, it's heavy enough to where you have to get down to it. So you go into a squat to catch it. So off the ground into the squat on your chest, and then you stand it up. That's a clean. So, yeah, it's it's one of my favorite exercises, by the way, when it doesn't hurt. They're nice. But I was doing that, and, you know, like my, I don't, I think at that time, my, PR was 335. I had actually attempted 350 one day, but missed it. What is your all-time anyway, PR right now? I feel like you've hit your all-time PR right before that, like a few weeks before that. Yeah, 335 was my all-time. I hit it probably a couple weeks before that or something. And so I had 295 on there and hit it. But it, like the squat was fine, but the you know actually pulling it and getting it to my shoulders was you know wasn't quite there but i hit it anyway and kane said i should really go for 305 but i decided you know like i'm i didn't want to because how bad 295 felt but then i got to thinking like i I probably should if he is going to destroy me on bench so i put 305 on that did you ever think about the overhead squat because your squat is like you know it's way bigger than his so i mean you could have just thought about the squat i don't have good shoulder strength i don't have good shoulder stability like my all-time overhead's like barely over 200 pounds i think or something but i went to pull my 305 i went to catch it and i got my elbow landed on my leg so the bar came down it's not supposed to happen and just yeah it's just the only time that's ever happened and i don't know how but it just happened. I wish I would have so recorded it, but man. I wasn't actually in the I was going to say insert the video if we have it, but we don't have the video. Yeah, but Dang. I wasn't actually in the quarterfinals. We were just doing it, so I didn't take a video. Semi-quarterfinals. But, yeah, that's, that's – And that, that put me out for a while, what, two months or so? Yeah, that's all we heard about. Pretty, pretty, pretty – Injuries pretty good pain. suck. We talked about that last week. They're like, yeah, it definitely sucks when people be un- undervaluing your injury. Like, bro, you shouldn't be crying. Like, hey, shut up. Over here, balling in the corner, bro. I'm like, bro, you just got here. Why are you crying? <laughs> My wrist hurts. <laughs> Go home. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. But yeah, that's that's my fitness story and my current state of fitness. Going, trying to. He's going through a, what it, that I don't know how I got. You're going through a little hump. Or I'm trying to like, 
obstacle. It's my annual, it's my annual hump. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you got to have a little slumpity hump. So yeah, you can get start getting jump. boring if you're just doing it all late right off yeah. of it. Yep. But it's kind of part of the... Last year, my hunt was being on second shift at Winchester, so it was just hard to find time to work out because I had to wake up so mm, late. Yeah. Yep. Shout out to Peyton. He works at the factories. He's out here getting it in eight, seven, yep. seven to five. Sure y'all got buckets to put food in. Yeah, man. I love putting a bucket food. Huh? <laughs> I don't know. Some of the buckets we make have stickers that... Or uh, like food grade buckets or so, Walmart you know, like buckets. restaurants. I, I don't guess. know. Maybe put some fish in it. That's good food. Catfish. Put your pond water in it. Yeah, that makes sense. We're um <laughs> we're gonna get uh, Peyton selling insurance here soon. We're gonna be the three. I've been trying, bro. Insurance and lift. I don't know, man. I'm, I like my job kind of when I'm not working six to four on a Saturday. I mean, that's always a a plus. To be fair, I was walking out of the door at 145, headed up there. And Man, I'd be getting gone, excited. I didn't get nosy to see what was wrong with the machine. Here we are. 60-hour work week. So where are you headed next? What's your goals for this next year? you have any goals set, Peyton? You want to just go ahead and, straight, yeah, just go ahead and dive into it and let you there? start it out because you had to leave a little earlier. If I can get back, yeah, if I can get back on my good schedule, I got – I got some Spartan goals. What is Spartan, for those bro? That don't know it's from, for those that don't know, Spartan race is all right. Obstacle course races. Have you ever heard of a Tough Mudder? Yeah. Those are, I feel like, one of the first ones you hear about. Actually, fun fact, Joe DeSena, the founder of Spartan, bought out Tough Mudder. That's that crazy. Stop trying They're to, actually doing like a Spartan CrossFit collaboration yeah, somewhere. Deca Fit or no, something like that. No, that's different. They're out doing like yeah, that's just they're at like the actual CrossFit brand and uh, Spartan are doing a race together of some I sorts. Know. I don't know the full details. I just saw one one article and that was all. I, I didn't even look at it. But yeah, I, a brief explanation of what Spartan is: it's just obstacle course races. Uh, they got rate. They got races and they have endurance events. Um, the races is what I do the most of. Obviously, I've never done one of the endurance. So they have what they uh, they got a Spartan Sprint, Super Beast, and an Ultra. Sprint is a 5K. Of course, they've changed over the years, but Sprint typically a 5K, about 20 op- 20 yeah 20 obstacles. Super is a 10K with 25 obstacles, and a Beast is a half marathon with or a 21K with about 30 obstacles. So they like so. add five obstacles and like double it. Yeah, double pretty the much. distance. So then, it, the the longer the race, the more running you do. That makes like, sense. <laughs> versus in correspondence, yeah, because it's less of op- obstacles at less do. obstacles yeah. per distance per yeah. capita. And then the beat the the ultra is a fifty k, which is about thirty one miles or so, with only uh, sixty obstacles. So it's pretty much just a double beast. But you're not like. The things with these Spartan races, unless you're trying to be like competitive, you're really not running the whole time. It's not like the same as like a 5K race or a 10K race because yeah, you have like obstacles. They have different heats. You know, they got open heats, elite heats. Elites are the people that are trying to win pretty much. They are the first heats that go out earliest in the morning. Those elite is how you make your money from it. Of course, that's not really my goal just because those people are fast and good and I'm fast and not good. What? I'm fast, but can't stay fast. He said he could take out, he can keep up with until the first obstacle. Yeah. But we don't uh, have any like obstacle courses I typically, here to like test on or train on. Yeah. Like I've, uh, I've thought about like building them or like building like a small one. Cause you know, I got land in my behind my house. Thought about building something. That'd be nice. I'd come look at it. Yeah. Might not do it, but you'll come in yeah. like, hey, good job. I might do it Give once. Props. But yeah, my, most of my goals revolve around that, other than the St. Jude Marathon. Uh-oh, uh-oh. uh-oh. My word that I'm ding, doing ding, ding. It. That's why I'm doing it again this year. Also, because I want to not walk six or seven miles at the end, which we'll get into that another day. But uh, 
I want, yeah, because I'm going to be there with you and Trevor. We're going to do it, yeah. do it as brothers. We're going to have our elbows touching for like a certain amount, and then we're just going to yeah. leave each other again. So what? 2023 is all about yeah. running. So man. what? Like, what is your goal for the Spartan? I know you said Spartan. Do you have like specific yeah. goals, to, like geared towards that? So there are two or three goals, I'd say. So in Spartan, they have this thing called a trifecta. If you in the same, I believe it's calendar year now, but in in the same race season, because sometimes it'll stop in like November or something. If you run one of each race type. And which means one sprint or one 5k run, one 10k run, or one beast or ultra, you get a trifecta. I say 5k run because they have like city runs, stadium runs and stuff that can all count as a sprint. So if you run any of those, a super and a beast or ultra, you get a trifecta. So my goal is in March to do a trifecta weekend, which means run on a Saturday, you go in and run a beast. So I'll be Jeez. running my half marathon on a Saturday. Go in Sunday, run the super, rest a couple hours, and then run the sprint. I've never done three races in one weekend. I've done two. I've done a super and a sprint, and I've done a beast and a sprint. So that's one. That's my goal. I've gotten a trifecta. Of course, it didn't count because... I uh, signed up for the races on two different yeah. accounts, so it didn't actually count. But I do I have gotten a trifecta, but I've never done three races in one weekend. So that's my first goal. That's, legit. To do that's only like three weekend. months away. Yep. And then my second goal, I'm hoping I'll be able to do it, is to do an ultra next year. I really want to run. 23 or 24? One, 23. Because going into this year, I'll say, instead of next year, that's my goal. Uh, might be around the fall end of the year. Just going to skip the marathon altogether yeah, and just go straight to ultra marathon. And then, well, that make the St. Jude but, easier because you're like, it's, yeah. well, not really because it's a road yeah, race but, straight through. But Yeah, but like, that's why I'd be more comfortable running one of these really long than just yeah. a marathon road race. Like, they both are going to suck, but... It's going to keep you, you know, occupied more. Then ultra is going, you got like a 12 hour time cap. The I'm not going into the ultra to win. I'm going in to do it. I'm somebody that uh, really likes to get challenged. I say that, but show up twice a week to the gym. It's like hey, something I've thought of. Own. Like if Dylan, if you or Kane try to get me to do a CrossFit workout, if it's like a five, 10 minute workout, I'm probably going to say no. But if it's something like 45 minutes to an hour, I so mean, you're more like it doesn't make you want sense. it to. I'm, you're more into. I want it to hurt. It was five ten not gonna hurt? Like that hurts worse. Well, they're gonna hurt, but I want it to like hurt for a really. long I would time. rather like I'm in the same boat. Like I'd rather do a longer forty five to an hour, just because it'd be easier. <laughs> yeah, like I don't know. I just like the mental test kind of thing, you know. Like Chad Murph, that's all mental. I say all mental. It's. Chad's more mental than Murph is because to be, you're really not going to get tired out on a thousand box step ups. I mean, you are. It's just <laughs> like you are, but you're going to be you like, wow, I'm really it. stepping on and off of this same box for yeah. an hour. You know, that's where the mental comes in for these. I think like, mental comes in know, like. That's, that, that's me. Like, there's a lot of things you like. We're like, oh man, it's all mental. But at the same time, it's like, nah, bro, this is super physical. I feel like. It gets physical to the point where it has to, where it gets mental as yeah. like where stuff's mental. It's not like open workout physical, you know, things that are designed to like break you quickly, but more over it's time. But I don't know. That's that's my view. Yeah. I like to more do of an endurance long, long stuff. Like I have like an endurance athlete mindset. Minus the actual work, work, work in that part. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, like, I want to be like an endurance athlete. I like doing, you know, them long All right, runs. Bro. Long... We're going to keep you accountable to that. And we're going, like, yeah, what, do you, what is goals. like, what, like, what is, we'll just dig in while we're here. I mean, what will get you to that goal? Like, what, what do you need to do each week that we can help you be accountable for and uh, to help you get there? 
if y'all want to do some long runs with me, let's do okay. it. So you need to do a long Early run morning, long every week. Saturday every long week. runs. It's a long run? Pretty much, yeah. Really, it's a matter of just me getting to the gym. Because if I can get to the gym, I'm going to work out, obviously. It's just I'm in a spot. Getting Going to the gym isn't a priority for some reason. Right, just laying the bed. It's, it's a rough spot, I would say. Like, I want to go to the gym, but at the same time, when it comes down to waking up at 4 o'clock, it's like, I don't want to get up yeah. right now. That's why I stay up. Or if I do, I want to <laughs> watch an episode of Peaky Blinders or something. So, yeah. long runs once a week, that'll get you there. That's all you need to do. Just And keep doing your gym, and you're, you're going to be ready. Yeah, pretty much. It's, I also want to do that... Uh, Death by 5K next year. That'll be fun. Death by 5K. Explain what this is again, because... Okay, I want y'all to do it. Now, if you don't have to sign up for the one, because it's like 125 bucks right yeah. now. Next, after January, it'll be like... Or after December, it'll be like 135 But all it is, is like if we don't go to that one, we can just do our own as artists. You run a 5K trail run. Every two and a half hours for 24 hours. At what point do we so die? Which puts you at 10, uh, probably halfway through the first 5K. <laughs> what's uh, what's the limit on when you have to cross? I mean, you just have to do it within so the So technically, two and a half you can just walk it. Yeah. Yeah. But, which would probably you know, happen. well, we all run, you know, 28 minute at least or 25 minute 5k's at our fastest so we're probably running 30 to 32 5k's if we're just gonna relax on a run so then that's two hours of rest you know uh, okay. take your naps they provide food and stuff that's something i want to do that's not really like a goal but you know that's just something yeah interesting do video year. sounds kind of yeah. sounds kind of fun i mean i have stuff like that as my goal like We'll talk about it when it's my turn, but yeah, that's pretty good, man. We're going to hold you to that and try to make sure you're doing a long run. You don't have to have us with you. I know you say you wanted us to run it, but. <laughs> Another thing is, is the running in cold weather. I'm not suited for yeah, that sucks. in cold weather. You have to start doing your do it. drive to Florida on the weekends. <laughs> yeah, drive to Florida, run, and come back. Yep. Yeah. Go to Destin. So, uh, I've been doing... I'll go to Pensacola. It's I've been doing, like, a cold bath. I'm trying to get into that, bro. Man, and, me uh, too. I've, I've done two. So, I've done one on Saturdays, both weeks. Uh, so, one a week since I started. Well, I don't have, like, a schedule. I'm doing it. So, But I'm really... I want to do it, more like, three times a week at least. But I just haven't gotten there. It's hard. mental. It's a mental barrier just getting the water turned on and then a mental barrier putting your toe in. It like it's crazy how it takes your breath away because I'm like I'm like okay it's not that bad it's not that bad no, I'm like, I can't you. breathe I can't breathe are you doing it's it like, before the workout yeah, like, or after I, well I've just been doing it uh, like last Saturday I I don't I did it like around lunchtime and I didn't work out till six but yesterday I did it after a workout but you you technically if you're going for like strength or hypertrophy you're technically supposed to wait at least four hours. But I didn't do that. I did like a CrossFit workout, so I wasn't worried about that. But yeah, I, I want to do it when I wake up in the morning, because I mean it only takes like five minutes total, and it'll help yeah. you wake mm, up. You know, yeah. like oh, I want to go work out. Once you sit there and trying to catch your breath for the next ten minutes, you know, like oh yeah, I'm awake. Yeah, I've never taken a cold bath. I've taken cold showers after workouts. Yeah, I've done the cold shower I've thing for bath. like a couple seconds. Cold bath, total immersion. It's supposed yeah. to be better. Yeah, it's if harder I had an ice for sure. Maker, I'd take more ice baths. I don't have an ice maker. I'm not even doing ice. I'm just, just doing cold, cold water. water right now. Maybe one day I'll get get ice in there. But cold, bro, it's surprising it's how your, cold that water gets, especially right now in the winter. Uh, yeah, because it's cold in the pipe. Yeah, I guess fall. Sit in the ice bath and then eat ice cream after you take a chew some wintergreen gum or something. And put menthol know. rub all over your body. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Eat a hog. Bro, I got my whole bathroom completely wet yesterday. Water went everywhere when I 
Because it's like you can't control yourself. If you're going it's in, like, you're just going boom. in. It's like <laughs> water everywhere. Put it all control of your body the second you touch yeah. the water. <laughs> but who's next? Me or you, Trevor? Are you done, Peyton? I think you're done. Yeah, I'm, uh, that's pretty much yeah. it. Just a lot of running ne- next year. Run. How, what's a long run even? Like, what do you count as a long run? Two miles? 12 miles? 20? S- in my current state, eh, I'd say about at least a 10K would be a long run for me. How, how long? But like, that's at least 10K. So 6.2 miles. So really anything above that, I can do it all. You know, it's just a matter of do mm-hmm. I want to. Like, I went ran that An hour plus. Marathon. Obviously, that's a you long run. You gotta do it when you don't want to. That's yeah. the key. You do that? For sure. You're like, oh, I can do it. Then you win the day. Because you already did something hard. Every day in the cold. Yeah. Okay. yeah, I mean, whatever you gotta do to get there. I feel like me and Dylan have done most of our long runs when it's like below 20. Yeah, it's something like that. Especially the first few, like it was raining and cold for like our first seven mile run. And then we did like a nine mile run in like the 20 degrees. Yeah, it was super cold. All right. Are we going to go run Friday? All three of us. This Friday? I don't know. I'll I have be, to look at my schedule. Don't come run with me. Yeah. I'll be down in uh, Florida. It's seven degrees outside. I think that's cold enough to do a run. Mm-hmm. We'll just meet up in Fort Myers. We'll get our running. If I can feel my toes. I'm just getting back into running. Like, I don't even know if I could do anything yeah. over a mile. I've only done treadmill running since yeah. I've been doing this new program. I, when was my last run? November or what? It was a while ago. Bro, November, like, three miles. <laughs> I ran six. I think it was, like, two three-mile runs that added up to be six. Yeah, I may have split them up. I, uh, I haven't, like, I, did, I tried to run, like, last week on the treadmill. And like I was like, oh, it's feeling good. I can do this. And then my like, my whole leg like, like gave out. <laughs> like it was like my Achilles locked no, up. I, I ran five and a half I minutes. Ran six miles. That's what yeah. it was. Five and a half minutes. My post marathon PR. There you go. Yeah, get you a run in this week, Dylan. I'm gonna try. I got. Uh, I just did the uh, Winners Coming Classic. It's an online competition through the program I follow, Training Think Tank. So I wasn't really running this week. Shout out, shout out, training Tank Tank. Tank Tank, Corpus Animus podcast. I love listening to that even before I got on the uh, program, but I'm on it now, so I'm a little more invested. But uh, yeah, it's like five workouts, CrossFit workouts. Peyton did one of them with me, uh, the 70 cal row, which is a lot harder than you think. Uh, but you know, yeah, that one. Hurt. I was shooting for like four minutes. Just because based off my metrics from before, earlier that week. And then Peyton was like, you got to go sub 330. And I hit 256, so that's pretty good. And I... Yeah, yeah when I when I guessed your time, I definitely... You overshot it. Assumed you were still bad at rowing, but you done got better What'd you, at seeing for yeah, 330. Nah, I mean, I haven't really trained. Is <laughs> I guess like 324 or something like that. Yeah, so you did overshoot it. But... uh. I mean, I haven't really trained much. I did like two weeks of kind of CrossFit training before the marathon just to kind of taper the marathon training. And then, you know, since then I've just been recovering from the marathon. So really my first week back into training fully and it was a competition week. So I haven't, I still haven't done a full week of training since then, which will be this week. But uh, I mean, I guess I can go into my goals since I'm already talking. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> All right. So I kind of have to... I'll kind of update what my goals were this past year to kind of go along that. I have mine written down. Uh, 2022 goals, which I have three, four, five, six, eleven, which they all kind of go together. I have like strength and fitness goals. So my big goal, I don't guess it was a big goal because it kind of wasn't my priority toward the end of the year. The beginning of the year, my priority was the squat, and I wanted to put 50 pounds on my squat. I was at 375, and I got up to 410. So for this next year, I want to – I, I kind of like – because mainly right now I'm trying to get leaner and get into more of a uh, fitness-type shape. So like I'm more 
efficient on my running and my CrossFit workouts. So that's one one goal right there is just to get leaner uh, and kind of maintain that through the year. And like if I do do like a bulk, do do if if I if I do a bulk, do, do, do. there we go. <laughs> if I do a bulk, you know, not to like push it as hard as I did. I mean, what I did served a purpose, like I said last week. But uh, so I really want to just right now my squat's really weak. Like three thirty five the other day almost crushed me, <laughs> which is like what seventy five pounds down. So I want to get back to like four hundred five, four ten, and I want to squat it like deep, like to dip because my 410 was it was kind of shallow so but i'm counting it because i did it but you know it wouldn't have probably wouldn't have counted in a competition and then my bench goal this past year was 275 and i hit that really early so i kind of gave up on that but it would be nice to hit like 300 315 is like my my goal for this year yeah, I, I, I think peyton's on the same page three plates man that's just like yeah, yeah i just because I want to break 300, man. Right. I've tried twice. And- Bro, you were so close. And, like, Kane, he been just, like, 315 plus. So, we're trying to get like him. So, that way he doesn't just beat us on every bench workout. And so, I deadlifted 405 this year. I want to try to get to 450. So, not too bad. But, I mean, it, it, it's attainable if I focus on it. Uh and I want to clean 300. I think my goal for this year was 275. But I feel like if I push my deadlift up, hey, buddy, if I push my deadlift up 50 pounds, my clean should j- jump up a little. Right now it's at 255. Uh, mostly just technique, I think, because I could front squat 315. And then Olympic lifting, I want to hit like, I think my jerk's like 235. So I want to hit. I want to add some weight onto that and my snatch. Two twenty five snatch is ideal, which that could be a big jump. Meaning I haven't like I hit like one eighty a few months ago. Hey, buddy. Crying over there, but doing what's going? Yeah, on? I'm getting. I'm tearing up. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about that two twenty snatches, like man, that's my yeah. goal, man. But I hit like one eighty, and just watching the videos of my attempts, it's all technique, really. So. Uh, you know, 225, that's just a nice round number, two plates. So, uh, uh, this was actually a goal last year. If we're going to get down into my fitness goals, obviously said get lean. I want to get lean and stay lean, get the abs showing, you know, even if just a little bit six pack ripped up. Yeah. I just shredded like shredded, you know, whatever, <laughs> like Peyton, <laughs> <laughs> Peyton is like shredded for no reason. <laughs> Peyton just lives shredded. So I want to run a mile sub six. I had that goal this past year, but I never really trained for it with all the stuff we ended up doing. So that's there. Just ended up doing long. Yeah, I'm, it's, it's all all marathon training. That goal is there. Now, if I decide to pursue it fully or not, you know, we'll get it. Because I want to test my mile this year too. Last time I PR'd my mile, I didn't even train for it, and I dropped ninety seconds off. I lost weight and did CrossFit. So I'm doing that. So hopefully, I could get back down to 6:35 and below her, below her what? <laughs> and below, below, what is the and below. lower uh, below? Uh, so hopefully, I can get there. And 5:45 is just a nice round number. It's all about the round numbers to me. I want to be. I didn't have a goal of like I want to hit 5:53. You know, 5:45. Might as well go for that. You know, and then the t- elusive. Also elusive, 21-minute 5K. A lot of these are just rolled over from last year that I didn't hit. Didn't hit the mile. Didn't hit the 5K goal. What was, what was our 5K? It's like 24 minutes. And uh, yeah. Peyton's got the fastest 5K of us. 23. Yeah, I was about to look it up to what, yeah, see what it you was. Were, you you PR'd. No, it used to be 23.57, but I yeah, smoked it. Yeah, you smoked it. it. And I'm trying to it's f- like 22 or 21. I got to go. F- I, gotta go I feel like if I could hit a sub-six mile... I could hit a little bit slower and hold out for three miles, maybe at a race, hyped up, pre workout. I could probably do it. So it's there. But a big goal that's on the map, it's on the calendar. 
So 50. It was 21.57. 21.57. That's crazy. So I'm trying to get like Peyton. But a big goal. It's on the map. It's on the calendar. Trevor's going with it. Sub 55, 10K. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. And Peyton can probably do it right now. Uh, but uh, That's hard, man. That's hurt. Not, I feel like hurt. we could do it. After all the marathon training, it feels possible. Yeah, because <clears throat> we were hitting, what, like 106 or something pretty consistently. Easy. Yeah, I mean, my at last year when we did the double decker, I think it was like one o, one o one or something like very close to that. Yeah. So I think if I push course, myself though. a little harder, yeah, it's all oil. So if we did on like flat course, maybe sub sixty. But also, just gotta run my ten k's faster than a nine minute mile. Yeah, I mean it. It seems easy on paper. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know. You, I just I like I'm tend to overpace. I try to avoid the pains. <laughs> so, All right, so we're going up in distance. Yeah. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. No, I was just saying, uh, reflecting on your run goal. So it's like sub fifty five. That's where you want to be. Yeah, I'm going up in distance. Like it started out sub six mile, sub you know twenty one minute five k, sub fifty five ten k. We're actually we have a group of guys. You know, we want Peyton to do it. We haven't really talked to him about it. We got... Sub two-hour half marathon. Now, I'm not even worried about a half, bro. I'm going straight <laughs> to marathon at that. Sub five. Sub five. Which was the goal, kind of a goal this year. I'm doing it again. Running it back. Well, I, actually, on my, my marathon goal was just to complete it, and I did it. You know, that's what I had wrote down. Oh, we're going we gonna to smoke Sub it. five, easy. We're going to smoke it. You know, sure. maybe even closer to four. Uh, I'm, This goal... I had it last year and I failed. I want to improve. I'm just gonna say 20 percent in the open. I actually, I want to do better than my first year in the open because it's almost 20 percent. I was looking at it the other day. Let me pull it up. Let me pull it up. And you can cut out the dead space if you want, but right. I'm gonna pull it up if there is any. All right, let's see. Let's see how I can pull this up. If you profile. All right, so 2021. 49th percentile not even top 50 percent that's my goal this year top 50 percent in the world in the crossfit games open top 50 percent i did 49th my first year i had just started crossfit you know i was feeling all right about that 2022 33rd percentile i got worse by 16 (laughs) percent that's incredible yeah it's incredible there's maybe just everybody else got yeah i mean there's maybe that's what it's a lot that goes into it and uh like but i'm not gonna make excuses but like there's more people in the open and more people had access to gyms that year but uh despite all that i'm going for 50 percentile or up uh for that and i'm gonna document it so my shame is gonna be on full display as I fail if I fail, but I'm I'm gonna. It's, I think it's in the bag because last year I couldn't, like I said, I couldn't do double unders or muscle ups. Uh, but whatever, you know. And that's about that's about it. I want to do my first Spartan race with Peyton this year. Just kind of one of those things to check off. March fifteenth. Uh, yeah, I think that's I think that's all my goals. Like, get fit. As I can get lean, stay lean, get my strength back up to where it was at least, and you know do a better squat, get a little stronger upper body, get stronger on Olympic lifts, improve in the CrossFit Open, and just knock off some time on my runs. And uh, you know. yeah, it's kind of crazy that most of your goals revolve around running. When did you become? This hey, big shut runner? up, bro. <laughs> Bro, shut up. Now I got to run. And I haven't ran <laughs> since up. the marathon. Shout out running. Let's go. No, those are definitely some goals. What's the best way we can keep you accountable to hit those goals, Dylan? Man, that's a great question. Never talk to me again. <laughs> <laughs> Man, just make sure I'm not skipping, you know, workouts because that was a big thing. I wasn't – I think I'm good, doing good. I'm already on the right path for the CrossFit goal. For the running is just to get like two workouts in a week, running, uh, you know, 
long run every once in a while. For now, I mean, get more into the long run and later in the year. I feel like I'm pretty good at the the gym goals. The running goals of just doing it. Especially now that I've been out of running for a couple of weeks. Mm. Getting back into it is probably the hardest part. But once I'm into it, and making really? time for it, because I always prioritize the gym. And like I said, it's going to be hard to run at just midnight. Just run but, to the gym and then double dip. Yeah, whatever. Just Get fitting two, it in. Four mile run, or three mile runs in, three five k's. Run to the just gym. Just a bunch back. of numbers. <laughs> just so basically, just two runs a week, you know. Yeah. At least one, you know. I think. But two, two. I think you might need more than two if you're gonna hit that sub five. Well, that'll be at the end of the year. Yeah. Which all I did this year was probably two average. Yeah. That's that's when the training ramps yeah. up. Summertime. But marathon is more of a volume thing hmm. than, but you got a whole year to knock off what thirty minutes off your. No, more than marathon. 30. Yeah, a whole hour. Like forty five. <laughs> whole hour. Three hours. It'll be all I have to do is not walk the last half. So do good training at the end. Quality Get training shoes. at the end of the year. Yeah, that's coming. Coming soon. But, yeah. uh, so Trevor, I, I what about you, bro? One thing, and then I'll go into my goals. I Bet. think uh, I think the Garmin Connect program is a real good way we keep accountable with running. But I think we need to have some sort of like end of the month type prize trope. Maybe we go in and get a trophy. But I mean, you're like marathon training year round now, so. <laughs> so I mean, you know. If y'all want to be accountable, if y'all want to win some stuff. I mean, I think still... I can hit. I, I accepted the invite. I'll be in it, bro. I'm trying to get the speed demon, but it's not working yeah. out for me the last I mean, few times. You know, we'll get three trophies. Hey, if I get a trophy. So somebody might be at the house with three trophies on their wall. We'll put it, we'll get a shelf on everybody's thing. So that, it yeah, can whoever has the trophy the for that month. That's what we need to do. Just get a trophy and pass it back and forth every month. Yeah, let's do that. Dang, I'm never going to see that trophy. <laughs> hey, you want to keep accountable? You get into marathon, you get a Spartan Ultra season. Yeah, once I get into that season. The second half of the year, bro, it's all running. Oh, yeah, because I got two marathons to run at the second yeah. half of the year. I mean, how's your running now? non-existent oh man it's great they don't hurt <laughs> <laughs> they don't hurt yeah <laughs> well all right do i need to just go into my goals peyton you still just... got time or i got i got a little go ahead bit. trevor if he I has to leave it'd be all right to pee. all right so for me 2022 was really <laughs> the year of starting the new getting into running fully i lost a ton of mass this past year because I really just focused on running and nothing else. So this year, really, the goal is to be able to run, but also keep my mass. Because I know it's possible. I've definitely seen people doing it, getting on the right programs, but also just eating right. Nick yep. Bear. Shout out, Nick. Yeah, you got to gain the mass. Yeah. So for me, the, I think number one goal is definitely going to be do at least a uh, duathlon. So something in the form of, doing bike and running that's uh on the list to do that this year and i don't i don't really know anything about like times and stuff i think i just want to check that off the list doing it this year not really going to set goals on time yet but just to do it and then uh number two is uh i really want to get below 430 marathon so when we do saint jude a little more ambitious than mine yeah uh, I, definitely I, know, attainable. I know we can do it. Like, I feel like first marathon is just to do it, and then yeah, the you're dropping one. like 45 minutes off the second one. Yeah, especially it just if depends how I wouldn't even got fast cramps. You go. Like, if I wouldn't have got yeah. cramps, I mean, that's probably like 30, 40 minutes right there. Just you're easily sub five if you would have hydrated properly. Yep. So, sub 430, crossing that. And then, um, Really, with my lifting goals, I think this year I want to be able to bench 225 again, so get back up to that. 
for ten. I don't, yeah, for ten, I don't know about for ten. That might be next year's goal. But <laughs> at least get back to where I can do it because I yeah, can't bro. do it anymore. But uh, I think with that, uh, the biggest way I can, you know, be kept accountable is like getting in those mileages every month, and yeah. also being at the gym. I feel like I'm, that's easy for you. I don't know, man. Uh, I thought it was easy. I, you have times. You have like a roller coaster. Well, I mean life. But yeah. you're like, man, you're always at the top of our little Garmin Connect thing. And then, you know, you'll just fall off for a couple of weeks. And then you'll be back. And we won't yeah. catch up. Now I'm trying yeah, to like run marathon. The slow turtle that's just consistent. Put himself in a good spot. Yeah, so just doing the like bare minimum. And, you know, being consistent. Being consistent is going to get you a lot farther than just like, all right, well, I haven't done anything in six weeks. I better run a half marathon today, and then you can't run for three weeks anyways. Yeah. And then you get injured or something. So Yeah. So it's better to do like two or three miles here or there and just be consistent with it. You know, you know, yeah. those are just numbers. but Run at least a mile every day. Still. At least, yeah. Good luck. So for the people that haven't ever even, you know, tried to set a fitness goal, I think we should explain like where we come from with it. So you kind of have to gauge off where you're at in your fitness journey yeah. to make a realistic goal. Because if you go out, obviously, you know, going out so super ambitious is good, but you also you're going to be disappointed. Yeah, you're going to be just like if me and Dylan stuck to four under sub four. And, you know, we hit well over an hour on our sub four. We're just like, man, we'll never be able to run again because we can't do it. Yeah. But it's about setting really high goals and understanding that those goals are reachable, but it's going to take a lot of commitment to hit those really ambitious goals. I think a good thing, like this is what I do like on an event or like a certain goal. It's like set three goals and kind of average them out. But like you don't even have to average them out. You can, like to have a you know have a good day. You can have a really ambitious goal. Like man, I just want to you know I'll make some. What I, my goals for the marathon? Really ambitious. Four hours, four and a half hours, somewhere in there. That is like if everything the stars align, everything feels great. That's where I'm gonna be. If you only run, you know, just. Don't set the bar too high. That's where I'm going to be. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're going to set the bar high. Set, like, that's an ambitious goal. And then you have the goal where it's like, if everything goes wrong, you know, I finished it. That's which is where I ended up being. I finished it. And then you have your middle goal of like, okay, this is realistic territory right here. You know, if everything's just okay, I'm going to hit around five hours. You know, that's our that's our real goal. But, you know, at the back of your mind, you always want to av- – you kind of – you don't want to do that for everything, but I'm like – you could, like, take that and then average it out. So, like, if you're squatting 215 right now, you're like, all right, so looking at your progress, you can make it easily, you know, 50 pounds – but if you put in the work, you might could get, you know, 100 pounds on your squat. So that your big goal is 315. And if you just stay consistent, you know, you're going to hit 360, I mean, 265 or what, you know, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Like, make it easy, but make it hard. You don't, you don't want it so ambitious that there's no way you're going to do it. And it, you're kind of depressed and you're yeah, never going to try anything again. Through. Like, I want to squat 500 pounds. Next like, year, like. And then yeah. six months in, you're only at 380. So you're like, well, I'm not even going to try anymore. But if you're we're like, okay, well, let's just add 50 pounds this year. And, you know, you're at 45 pounds six months in. You're like, you might be even hit close to your goal than you thought. You know, you always want that big goal in mind, you know, long-term goal. And then you want, like, short-term goals to kind of keep you there. Because those short-term goals are what's going to, you know, kind of push you down. Small wins. Yeah, you want the small wins. They add up. They do. So yeah. always have a big goal in mind, but along the way you, you have want... a big goal in mind, so you're never satisfied. Because if you become satisfied, 
you become complacent. Yeah, I don't remember who said it, but it's like it's a quote by someone famous. I mean, they're probably gonna roast me for not knowing this. Peyton, but Cook. It's like you'd rather aim high than miss than aim or aim high and miss than aim low and hit because there's. I mean, there's more possibilities when you're yeah. aiming high. Yeah. I mean, it's like they say, shoot for the moon, and you at least land them on the stars. Mm-hmm. Yep. Stars I mean, are further you... than the moon, but we're just taking quotes. Yeah, you know, you miss a hundred percent of the yep. shots you don't take, man. That's, just... that's true. <laughs> Quotations. The summary of yeah. it is: set big goals, work, see results, be man. consistent, and find some accountability to help you be consistent. And set you big will... but realistic goals. Yeah. You want to push yourself, but you don't want to disappoint yourself because you're gonna fail. Like I said, like I listed my goals out, I failed quite a few of them. Yep. But you know, I'm readjusting this year. I still haven't hit 300 this year. That was my goal. Mm-mm-mm. You still got two weeks. You could do it today. I'm about to eat Zaxby's chicken fingers every yeah. day until then. That'll do it. I mean, you're joking, but you did 295. So you, bro, you, that's 1500 calories, bro. It's easy. I mean, I'm talking about if you like gained weight. <laughs> <laughs> gaining weight does a lot more than a lot of people think but a lot of people would take it too far <laughs> i so mean you gotta look at strong man they're eating like ten thousand calories a day you gain mega strength but you will get fat big boy gains yeah i mean what's your goal <laughs> <laughs> exactly but yeah solid solid episode went over our Peyton, boy Peyton's story and uh, whatever our goals for the year y'all hold us accountable y'all we're gonna update but let's do an update like six months see where we're at yeah we'll do a goal recap midway through and then we'll do one at the end of the year too and uh, y'all put your goals in the comments just at you know at least one goal for the year fitness goal you know uh, if you're not doing anything right now you're not working out at all you know, you you may be overweight. You may not be. You may be eating junk food. A good goal, you know, get 10,000 steps in a day or go on a one 30-minute walk a day. And that'll do a lot for you, a lot more than you think. You don't have to, you know, all right, I'm going to be like Dylan, Trevor, and Peyton and go to the gym two to five days a week. <laughs> and, uh I mean, you could be like Peyton two days a week, but you don't have to lift like the weights he's lifting. Like, just start simple, build just consistency. Con- yeah, just start. Consistency is what's going to make the biggest difference, and just a little bit of activity a day will make a big change. You know, get one meal that you eat the same every day that's healthy. Like, breakfast is pretty simple, and uh, you know, cut out some of the cut out one thing from your diet, and you'll make huge gains towards your goals. Just do not cut out cosmic brownies. They are the secret to success. Don't listen to him. Yeah, fact check that before you take that advice. (laughs) Google search. (laughs) But that's a wrap, I think. That's a wrap. Yeah, I think we're good on it. That's good, bro. All right. Yeah, appreciate y'all for watching. Uh, Just follow us on Instagram, Facebook. What what else is YouTube? Dill the Young, D Y L, Spotify, Tiki Talk, yeah, Anchor, Spotify, Dill the Young, on that. Put work in on everything. Put work in podcast. That's our name. Uh, yeah, follow me on Spotify. Follow the, the podcast on Spotify. Dill the Young on all the platforms. Peyton, what you got? What's your what's yours? It, it's it's different on all of them, so we won't worry Peyton about Cook, that. Peyton Cook, just look him up if you see his face. Follow him. That's me. Yep. Just Trev. Just Trev everywhere. You'll find me. That's just Trev, bro. And uh, that's a wrap, guys. We'll see y'all next week or next time, whatever. Peace out. Peace out. Put work in. Put the work in. See the results. Bye. <laughs>